All right, in this video, I'm going to take this completely flat uh, blank. This is a Brazilian blank B20, and I'm going to turn it into a flat ride. So what I've done so far is I've marked out my approximate center because this is very roughly cut into a circle. It's got real jagged edges, uh, but I've roughly marked out my center and I've punched a little divot. If you can kind of see right there punched a little divot in the center and that's what I'm going to use as my little pilot to get my drill through once I have the shape and uh, yeah so I'm going to just start hammering show you guys how I shape this thing
Okay, so, so far you can see um, I've only worked this portion up to the center. Uh, because of the way that it was, you can see how on the edges there it's wanting to curve up like this, right? So I'm not, essentially I'm, I'm waiting to decide what's gonna be the top and what's gonna be the bottom. Uh, because this has a, a hard arc, I typically try to reverse that hard arc. So if uh, with this having a curvature upwards, I was originally thinking that this would be the top surface right here. So I'm hammering this, and then the idea is to flip it the other way. And because it's wanting th wanting to come this way, if I give it the right amount of hammering on the bottom, it'll give me a really strong uh, uh, curvature right in this section with it flipped the opposite way. Uh, kind of hard to explain why that is, but essentially, uh, to boil it down simply, this is an untensioned piece of metal until I hammer it. And I want to tension it to be, exist in a state that it doesn't want to be in, right? It wants to be loose. It wants to just be relaxed. And so I'm putting this hammering in and this stretch in so that I can tell it where I want it to sit. And because it doesn't want to be in that position, that's what is giving it the sustain. It's giving it the sound and the tone. Uh, think about like a guitar string that's totally untensioned. It's not going to make a noise, but as soon as you tighten that thing you, and you pluck it, you're going to hear uh, a note, a sustaining note. So this material acts in a in a somewhat similar manner where, where I'm putting uh, stretch in it, I'm putting tension in it, and uh, that is what's allowing it to have uh, a tone, a pitch, overtones, and a crash that sustains, and it's not just a hunk of metal that goes chink when you hit it. So... Uh, I'm still deciding whether or not this is going to be the top surface or if this is going to be the top surface. But uh, because of how, like if this was the top surface, see how wavy it is? It's going to be so difficult for me to get it into a, a good shape. So I do really think this is going to be the top, but I'm going to start uh, hammering on the other side and then we'll really start to see uh, what it wants to be. All right, it's pretty much like I was guessing. Uh, 
because it was wanting to curve upward this way, all I did was come on the bottom and hammer here. And then when I was able to flip it, I now have what's beginning to become a, a usable shape. So uh, this is going to be my top, be my top where I punched the, uh, the little pilot thing there. This is gonna be my bottom. I haven't even worked this area here and I already have a curvature going. So uh, that's uh, a little reason why typically if a symbol, if I have to decide what's gonna be the top and the bottom, if I'm working with a totally flat blank, I usually, if it wants to bowl in one way, I usually uh, in, make the inverse the top side. So I want it to flip and be the other way because it's already got a curvature that's wanting to be here in a relaxed state. So I want to force it into the other state and I'll be able to use that stretch to my advantage to get the kind of shape that I want.
All right, so now we're tacoed uh, the opposite way, right? So this is this is the underside, and I've hammered it so much that it's doing the taco thing. So now, in theory, I'll flip this thing the other way and start adding in more top hammering uh, and, and go pretty dense with it. And then by the time I flip it back into this way, we shouldn't have a taco, we should have a, a shape that has a pretty flat edge and has a nice curvature. So. Uh, let's see if I can execute. <laughs> okay. Before I do that, I just popped it in, as you saw, or maybe you saw, let's see. Yeah, you kind of saw it. Um, so because it was taco the other way, when I flipped it, all of a sudden, boom, shape. So technically I can make this, this the top, but this is the underside. This is the top here. So I'm gonna hammer this more, hammer this a lot more. It's gonna start to taco. Then when I flip it back the other way, uh, like I said, we should have a good, fairly strong shape.
Okay, now it's not tacoing near as much as uh, as it can and will once I keep hammering on it. But let's go ahead and flip this thing. Uh, see what we got. That is looking like a pretty good start. So, from my vantage point, it's got that kind of triangular shape I talk about, um, and. With this particular flat ride, what I'm going for is more flatness up top and a more of an arc here. So I want to build this up. Now the way I'm going to do that is with density here in this outer half of the symbol, basically from about here to the edge. The more I top hammer that, the more I'm going to grow it into a stronger shape there. And then at that point, I'll do a little bit of ironing out, but then we'll be ready to drill the hole and do the edging.
right, at this point, we've got a pretty good shape and I don't want this any taller than it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop my center hole now. Feels a little soft under there. Center hole popped. We got ourselves a very dry symbol. All right, so it's been edged now. Uh, Originally it started out what I thought was going to turn into a 19 inch, but it was really oblong. So to get a perfect circle, I had to probably cut it down to about 18 and a half inches. Uh, but now I'm going to show you a little bit of the lathing process, removing this oxide crust, exposing the raw bronze underneath. I'll do uh, the bottom and then flip it over and do the top. And then from there, it's about assessing things, doing some uh, hammering to dial in tension. And then pretty much at that point, you can, you can just call it a day. Uh, usually I'll, I'll get to this point, do the, do the uh, initial lathing, do some hammering to iron out, balance the tension, but then I'll usually just let it sit for a day or two, uh, let the molecules rest and then play it in a day or two and then I'll really know what it needs to finalize it.
All right, so there it is. Top and bottom is freshly, freshly shaved. And uh, I was a little bit wrong on the diameter. It's actually just barely under uh, 19 inches. It's 18 and 7 eighths inches. It is uh, 1,720 grams. And it's in a fairly good shape. When I look at the side profile, I don't see too many issues there. There's a couple things I'm going to have to dial in. Um, but for the most part, the symbol is complete. Uh, right now, it sounds real dry, real dead. Just compared to what it will sound like, it's going to open up a lot more. I was really paying, if you noticed, I was really taking a lot of time out near the edge to uh, work on that taper, both top and bottom. I want this thing to, wanted this thing to be really thin at the edge so it could have a nice crash. It's also a touch heavy for, for what I'm uh, gonna want out of the cymbal. Uh, I'm probably gonna take it down, if it's 1,720 grams now, I'm probably gonna end up taking it down to 1,400 grams even. So really taking it uh, really paper thin. I'm looking for a super paper thin uh, flat ride. It's got a nice crash, but there's still stick definition. So that's just gonna mean I'm gonna have to pay extra attention to balancing the tension and making sure there's nothing going on with uh, soft spots or weird hums or anything like that because I really am gonna need articulation given I'm going so thin with it. So. This is a little insight in how I take a completely flat blank and turn it into a symbol. So um, I'll tag a final video after this symbol is completely done. I'm going to do more work, more lathing, probably a little bit more hammering. Um, but I'll tag the video of the, of the actual finished symbol so you can hear what it sounds like after all is said and done. But other than that, drop a comment below. Hit the subscribe button and the bell if you want notifications. And keep an eye out for the next video. I'm Timothy Roberts. Thanks for watching.